Good evening, boys and girls. Jeffy Lyon. It's August the 22nd, 2011. I, I don't know if you ever played dominoes as a kid. You know, you'd set up this whole line of dominoes, hit the first, and topple around, and just by knocking down the first one, they all fall. And that's what we're seeing in the Middle East, beginning of the year. And Ivory Coast, Tunisia, Egypt, now Libya's down as the Middle Eastern governments continue to topple like dominoes Syria is next keep your eyes on Syria it goes very soon as we continue to see a very rapid pace of prophetic events taking place before our eyes around the world if you're not seeing that you need to wake up wake up from the American nightmare come to life join the land of the living as we move toward the midway of the 70th week of Daniel, the fullness of the Gentiles, and the soon coming culmination or consummation of the end of the age. Tonight we're going to talk a little bit about honoring the Sabbath. Somewhat of a controversial subject, which really should not be. If I came to you tonight and said, hey guys, listen, I have this great new revelation. There are actually ten days in the calendar week. No, no, really. I mean, there are ten days in the calendar week. You would stop, probably shut me off and say, the dude's nuts. But if I continued to repeat it, enough people heard it and they continued to repeat it, over time, <laughs> it would just be accepted as truth that somehow... This little theory introduced on August the 22nd, 2011, that there were 10 days would likely, if enough people believed it and repeated it, would likely become truth on down the line. Well, that is exactly what took place in the year 321 A.D. with the Roman Emperor Constantine. Now, let me just begin with the, the, the absolute indisputable historic understanding of the biblical Sabbath throughout the entire history of the Old Testament throughout the entire history of Israel and and the, and the Jewish people or Judaism with the introduction and birth of the Lamb of God the Lord Jesus and the bringing in or ushering in of the kingdom of God at that time and the bringing in of the new covenant throughout the life of the Lord Jesus the Lamb of God and to his disciples those who followed him and throughout the history of the early church matter of fact throughout the entire Bible there has been one Sabbath instituted by God himself and God alone as we read in Exodus chapter 31 for six days work may be done but on the seventh day there is a Sabbath of complete rest holy to the Lord verse 16 so the sons of Israel shall observe the Sabbath now this next verse is very key <clears throat> to celebrate the Sabbath throughout their generations as a perpetual covenant. The word perpetual means ongoing. It never ends. Much like the priesthood of Melchizedek. It is forever. Never ceasing. Verse 17, It is a sign between me and the sons of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, but on the seventh day he ceased from labor and was refreshed. And a lot of people get caught up in the whole legalism aspect of it being part of the law. Jesus was the fulfillment of the law, therefore we're not under the law. And I'm really not even coming at it from that angle tonight. Yes, it was part of the law, but it was more than that. Yes, it was number four of the Ten Commandments, but it's more than that. According to Exodus 31, it was a sign of an everlasting covenant between the Lord and the children of Israel forever. And you may say, well, 
that's great, Jeff, but I'm a Christian. I'm not part of the children of Israel. Well, then you have no understanding as to what being a Christian really is because the body of Christ, a Christian who has truly been called out of darkness and into light, called out of Egypt and into Israel, taken as part of the wild olive tree and grafted into the true olive tree, you are, as a believer, Israel. So just understand that the perpetual covenant established by the Lord between He and Moses in Exodus 31 was a covenant that was continued throughout the history of the Jewish people, was continued and observed throughout the life of Jesus, was continued and observed throughout the early church, was continued and observed throughout the entire New Testament. And that Sabbath or in the Hebrew, Shabbat, which literally means rest. So, Shabbat Shalom is peaceful rest, or a restful, peaceful Sabbath. You're going to see in the New Testament, Peter speaks of one day being as a thousand years, a thousand years being of one day. And you can perceive the seventh day or the Sabbath rest, much like the soon coming seventh millennium, in which will be a, a time of of complete peace and rest upon the earth at the return of Jesus Yeshua the Messiah in the not too distant future. In the year 321 AD the Roman, I emphasize and underscore, Roman Emperor Constantine decreed on the venerable day of the sun let the magistrates and people residing in cities rest that all workshops be closed. Most scholars concur that this declaration was in reference to esoteric Eastern sun worship which Aurelian had helped introduce and his coinage still carried the symbols of the sun cult to that day. Constantine was, was, rose to power at a time in which the, the Roman Empire was in great conflict and division and in an effort to placate both Christianity and paganism, he introduced what he referred to as the venerable day of the Lord and declared Sunday the day of rest when we all know, according to Scripture, throughout the history of the Jewish people, throughout the history of Israel, throughout the history of the New Testament, the Sabbath was Saturday a day instituted by God the Father himself and carried out and followed by his son and disciples to his son. To be specific, sundown Friday evening with the appearance of three stars in the night sky until the following Saturday evening. And again I would say to you, I'm not even talking to you tonight about the law or being legalistic. We're not even really talking about the Ten Commandments. What we are talking about is a perpetual ongoing covenant that the Lord Himself instituted that would be God the Father, Adonai, El Elyon, God Most High and was continued by His Son, the Lamb of God, Yeshua the Lord Jesus continued by His disciples, continued by the early church. The early church, according to Acts chapter 2, regarded every day as a day of worship. So I'm not really even talking to you tonight about where you go to church I'm not talking about when you go to church. Hopefully you're in a place of worship every day as the early church daily continued in one heart, one mind, one spirit of one accord seeking the Lord both in prayer, worship, the apostles teaching, the breaking of bread. This is what the church is all about. And what I'm saying to you is that, that as we are in a quest for truth, as we are looking for authentic Christianity. Let's not, let's not look to the teaching of man. Let's not look at some Roman rogue emperor in the third century who took it upon himself to change the Lord's Day, that being Saturday, a day of rest, to Sunday. Let's be a people of covenant who say to the Lord, if it be thy will, let your will be my will and I am absolutely committed to obedience to your word. 
And that is tonight as we refer to the honoring of the Sabbath. Now there will be some that go to the extent of saying you have the mark of Yahweh in the Old Testament which is the keeping of His Sabbath. You have the mark of the beast in Revelation 13. Two totally different marks. Two totally different signs. And while I'm not prepared to say that that is the quote-unquote mark of the beast, what I would say it is the observance of Sunday as the Sabbath is part of that system. It is a system that we need to come out of in recognition that the, 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 the observance of something is what we're paying honor and tribute to. Much like the distinction between pagan holidays, such as Easter and others, versus God's holy days or holy Sabbaths. And again, I'm not even going into the legalism aspect of it, nor am I talking to you about the absolute keeping of the commandments, though that is important. What I am saying is that we are, is that we are as we are honoring and observant and desiring for our lives to be pleasing to the Lord in all that we are and that we do, recognize that it was a Roman emperor named Constantine in 321 AD who changed, who changed, man who changed, the Sabbath, God's Sabbath, which was Saturday, to, to an observance of Sunday, which has increasingly become the delusion globally throughout time. Much like I would say to you tonight, there are ten days in the in the in the week over a period of time if it was repeated and observed enough all of a sudden there would be 10 days, 10 days in the week it is the Roman system that cannot be trusted the Roman system that has been the enemy of the people of God from the beginning well as to the time of Jesus it is the Roman system of course we talked about Rome being the sixth king of the book of Revelation chapter 17 and the Vatican, which comes out of the Rome, being the eighth king of Revelation chapter 17. So I would encourage you, honoring the Sabbath is not about where you go to church, not about when you go to church. Sabbath is rest. It is saying, in observance to covenant, as a sign of covenant, a recognition that as the Lord set in place His Sabbath, it is an observance and honoring and acknowledging to him as saying, Father, as your son or as your daughter, as part of the children of Israel, Jew or Gentile, I long to and desire in my heart to honor your Sabbath day. And that is to be a day of rest. Three stars in the night sky, Friday evening to Saturday evening. Rest. That's what the Sabbath's about. Not about where you go to church or when you go to church. Go to church every day. But keep and honor the Sabbath by setting aside that time where A, you don't work, B, you don't do your own thing. I'm a golfer. Love to play golf. Love to go to the lake. Love to do a bunch of stuff. But from that period of time, according to the Word, I am instructed, number one, to rest and set, of that, set aside that time as holy unto the Lord. If you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath and from doing as you please on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the Lord's holy day honorable, and if you honor it by not going your own way, not doing as you please, or speaking idle words, then you will find your joy in the Lord. I don't know about you, but that's where I want to find my joy. And I will cause you to ride on the heights of the land and to feast on the inheritance of your father Jacob. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 13 and 14. Here's the perseverance of the saints who keep the commandments of God and their faith in Jesus. Revelation chapter 14 12. Jeffrey Lyon August the 22nd honoring the Sabbath. Stay strong.